So something truly insane just happened in the House of Representatives. And in order to really understand this insanity, we have to take an unpleasant but mercifully brief trip down memory lane. One of the biggest moments of the 2008 financial crisis fun times was the near collapse and eventual bailout of a company called AIG, and the risky behavior that pushed AIG to the brink and eventually forced the taxpayers to bail their sweet asses out to the tune of $85 billion was a financial instrument known as derivative deriv deriv derivatives trading. Since there's not enough time to explain or apparently learn how to pronounce derivatives in this video, I'll link some sources for you in the description. The important thing to remember is that no Nobody from Occupy Wall Street to the Tea Party was thrilled with the idea that the taxpayer should be on the hook every time Wall Street gambles itself into a corner. So in 2010, when Congress decided to pass a new set of financial regulations known as Dodd-Frank, they included a provision that basically said you can't get a bailout for certain kinds of derivatives. Just certain kinds, not even all of them. And this brings us back to the insanity that I was talking about all the way one minute ago. Because the House of Representatives just passed a bill that would get rid of this no bailouts for derivatives rule. This didn't happen because of some massive public demand. Most Americans haven't even heard of derivatives trading, let alone ask their congressmen to deregulate it. This happened because big banks wrote this bill. Literally. That's not some cute turn of phrase or an exaggeration. 70 of the 85 lines in this bill reflect recommendations made in a piece of model legislation written by lobbyists for Citigroup, another bank that played a major role in the 2008 financial crisis and also required billions of federal stimulus dollars in return for not blowing up the world economy. Two crucial paragraphs in the bill the House eventually passed were copied almost word for word from the Citigroup version. It's the congressional equivalent of copying a term paper from Wikipedia if Wikipedia was also paying your tuition. Members of the House received $22.4 million in campaign contributions from interest groups in support of this bill. That's nearly six times more than they received from interest groups opposed. Contribution data also shows that donors with Wall Street ties are major sources of campaign funding for the bill's sponsor and six of the eight co-sponsors. Then there's House Financial Services Chair Jeb Henserling. Sarling, whatever. He's the guy who helped whisk the bill through committee, and I swear this is true, spent a posh weekend partying it up with Wall Street lobbyists in Park City, Utah, on a ski vacation. They go skiing together! I could go on about how Wall Street has spent $50 million on lobbying expenditures in 2013 alone, or how one of the co-sponsors of this bill, Representative Jim Hines of Connecticut, used to work on Wall Street as an executive for Goldman Sachs, but I think most of you are already noticing a theme developing here. At a time when economic growth is still stagnant and there's issues to deal with from the national debt to the fact that one in five children in this country is still born into poverty, your intrepid congressmen are instead working working on this. Your House of Representatives just passed a bill designed to roll back protections put in place after the last financial crisis that was literally written by lobbyists for the people who caused the last financial crisis. This bill was sponsored by a bipartisan group, five Republicans and four Democrats, and all of them depend on Wall Street to fund their campaigns. Journalists and pundits may continue to dance around the issue with euphemisms like insider culture or influence peddling, but this wholesale purchase of of the legislative process by special interests reveals a much more urgent truth. Our government has become a place where fundraising takes priority over the public good. Our government feels more accountable to those who bankroll its members than to the people it was elected to represent. Our government is corrupt. It's time we did something about it. My name is Mansoor Gidfar. I'm the communications director for an anti-corruption organization called Represent Us. We're building a movement behind a proposal called the American Anti-Corruption Act that would make this kind of crap illegal. Because the truth is, what we face as a nation goes beyond problems of money in politics or a need for campaign finance reform. It's corruption, and we're going to stop it.